Welcome back to my channel and today I'm just basically just going to be going through a bunch of practice questions for you guys for the selective school exam. So I'll just have a bunch of different questions from each topic for you to work through from maths, reading, comprehension, verbal and numerical reasoning. And I'll just be going through them and how you can solve them and some different strategies that you can use that will really help you on the actual exam itself. But yeah, enjoy that and make sure to like and subscribe down below. And also, if you're interested in some online private tutoring classes for the selective school exam, then make sure to check out the description box down below for some more details on some classes that I'll be running. And also how you can sign up for a free trial class for this as well to show you how the classes will be run. A few reasons why you should sign up for these classes. One, it's a fully extensive course that is term wide and covers all the content needed for you to pass the selective school exam. Everything is included with it, the material and loads of practice questions. And it covers like reading, comprehension, maths, verbal reasoning, numerical reasoning, and even writing. Two, it's online, so it's affordable and it's easily accessible, so you don't have to go anywhere. Third, I also have a lot of experience with the selective school exam. For example, I took the test myself and I've also been consistently making these videos for you guys. So yeah, I still know what the content of the test will be like, so I have enough experience to further help you guys with it. Fourth, the classes are also going to be no more than two to three students per class. Last, like I said before, there's also a free trial class for you to experience what a normal class would look like. So yeah, make sure you check out the description box down below for more information on how you can sign up for this free trial class and also for further classes. Now, let's get back to the video. So the first set of questions that we're on is math. So let's begin. So the first question is what number needs to be added to make the average six so for this question we have the numbers we have a list of the numbers two five seven ten and eleven and it's asking us to make the average of the list six by adding one number so first of all we need to know what average is so average is the sum of the numbers divided by the total numbers so like the total number of numbers basically if we add another number to this list, we'll have a total of 6. And we want our average to be 6. So our formula is this, sum divided by total is 6. And we know that the total number will also be 6 since we're going to get 6 numbers in total. So it's sum divided by 6 is also equal to 6. So that means that if we move our this 6 to the other side, it would be 6 times 6. So our sum is equal to 36. So that's what all our numbers need to be added to 36. So if we see right now, what, what's the sum? The sum is 2 plus 5, that's 7. 7 plus 7, 14. 14 plus 10, 24. 24 plus 11, 35. So right now, the sum is 35. And we need to make 36. So we have to add 1 to make 36. So our answer would be C1, since we need to add the number 1 to this list to make the average 6. So if we do that, our answer is C1. And we can, we can check that as well to verify it. So if we have the list, it's 1 plus 2, 3. 3 plus 5, 8. 8 plus 7, 15. 15 plus 10, 25. And 25 plus 11, 36. 36 divided by all 6 numbers is 6. So that, that makes the average 6 and that means our answer is correct. So yeah, that's how you do that question. So now the second question that we have. Four friends, A, B, C, and D, share a jar of 250 M&Ms so that A gets a third of the amount B gets and B gets three quarters of the amount C gets and D gets double the amount of a, B, a, that A gets. So what's the ratio of A to B to C to D? So for this question, we just have to use like algebra. So we can do, since A gets a third of the amount B gets, so if A is 1, X, so X, and B is, since A is a third, so B would be 3X. And if B gets 3 quarters of the amount C gets, so that means C would be 4X, since 3X divided by 4X is 3 quarters. And then since D gets double the amount of A, so that means X times 2, so 2X. So that means this X is A, and then 3X is B, and then 4X is C, and then 2X is D. So if we see our ratio, 
it would be 1 to 3 to 4 to 2. So if we see our options list, the answer B would be the right answer since it's 1 to 3 to 4 to 2, just like the ratio that we got. So yeah, there will be a lot of ratio questions, so you definitely need to be good at these kind of questions to do well on the exam. So now the third question is, a packet has three red, four blue, and five black pens. If two pens were selected, what is the probability that they were both red? Okay, so probability is just how many you have of that category divided by the total. So right now, if we want to find one red, it would be three divided by the total, which is three plus four, seven, seven plus five, twelve. So if we wanted to get the probability of one red pen, it would be a quarter, since there's a quarter red. But in this question, we want to get two if they were both red. So that means after we've gotten the first red, we need to get another red from the remaining. But since we already took one red pen, there would be two red pens left. And the total amount of pens would not be 12, it would be 11 since we already took one pen. So the next one is two out of 11. Now what we got to do is we got to multiply a quarter times 2 out of 11. So the answer to that is 2 out of 44, which can be simplified to 1 out of 22. So our answer would be A, 1 out of 22. Okay, so now we're moving on to reading, reading comprehension basically. But it's kind of hard to do reading comprehension questions like this. So... I'll go through some other kind of questions that are also on the reading comprehension test such as like proverb questions or like vocabulary questions so that's what we're gonna do so the first question is the word tumultuous means a dangerous b loud c shocked and d peaceful okay so this kind of question the only thing you can basically do for this is just you need to know your vocabulary so if you don't know it, it's kind of hard to answer these kind of questions. So the answer would be be loud, since the word tumultuous means like just it means like being loud and noisy, basically. So yeah, that's how you do that question. And then the next question is the phrase you can't teach an old dog new tricks suggests. So A, B, C, or D. So now for this question, this is a proverb question. The main thing that you need to keep in mind with proverb question is that. Most, like 99% of the time, they're not literally. So, basically, for this kind of thing, it, since it's about old dog new tricks, you wouldn't select anything that is related to dogs, basically. Since So, we can just eliminate B and C, since that's too literal. And proverbs aren't meant to be literal. So, it's not B or C. And then, you could choose D, but that one is too broad, that answer. Teaching things is pointless. In this proverb, you're specifically talking about teaching an old dog new tricks. So the answer would be A, since you're talking about a person's old ways and habits, and you're trying to change them. So that's the answer A. D is just talking about like a broad in general, just, just teaching anything is pointless. This is talking about specifically that, that's why it's A rather than D. So the third question is, an antonym for the word ecstatic is A overjoyed, B excited, C elated, D miserable again this is vocabulary related but for this question even if you don't know what the word ecstatic means you can tell that excited and overjoyed are similar so it's not gonna be one of these two even if you don't know what elated means you can tell that miserable is the opposite of like excited and overjoyed so since these two aren't gonna be it then it has to be the opposite of them which would be miserable so the answer is D miserable so that's how you can use like educated guessing to work these kind of questions out and you can use the options to find the answer but yeah but if you, like the best thing is just to have a good vocabulary and know what all these words mean so you can find out what these mean much quicker so anyways moving on to verbal reasoning so these are relationship questions so the first question is snow is to blizzard as rain is to in this relationship a blizzard is like a storm of snow basically like heavy snow so we just have to find what is heavy rain drought is like no rain at all earthquake has nothing to do with rain drizzle is light rain so the answer is a thunderstorm which means heavy rain 
So yeah. And now the second question is, what is the odd word out? Again, this is vocabulary. So the best thing is just to know what all four of these words mean. But if you don't, so for example, in this you can also use the options to work out the answer. So careful and vigilant are similar. So they're not going to be it. But reckless is like the opposite of careful. Since reckless means to just not care. So the answer would be C, reckless. Since that is um, different to careful and careful is already similar to another word. So you can assume that prudent also means similar to careful even if you don't know what that word means. And then just from that you can tell that reckless is different from everything else. So yeah, that's how you, again how you can use the other options to figure out the answer. So the third question is straightforward is to candid as fluent is to. So in this relationship question, this relation the relationship here is synonyms. So straightforward is a synonym of candid. So we have to find a synonym of fluent for this answer. Confusing is sort of the opposite of fluent, and so is hesitant. So, famous has nothing to do with that word. So the answer is C, articulate, which means to like speak fluently, basically. So now the last one is numerical reasoning. So this, what is the missing number? So this is a common kind of question that you'll find. So it's like patterns. So seven, three, nine, five, eleven, blank, thirteen, nine. A really common pattern is just when you have one number, then you skip one, and then that's the next number. So if we follow that pattern here, it's 7, skip 9, skip 11, skip 13. So yeah, it's going odd numbers basically after you skip. And then if we have the, if we start from 3, 3, skip 5, skip blank, skip 9. So we have again odd numbers every alternate number. So if we can tell by the pattern, it would be 3, skip 5, skip 7 so the answer would be a7 you just have to learn and practice how to work out patterns really fast and that way you can do these questions really easily so now this other one is also sort of like a pattern so this question is find the missing number 224 that's one group 550 25 that's another group 440 blank that's the third group so we have to find what question mark is so if we see in each group the first and second number they have a relationship of times 10 so the second number is always 10 times the first number so 2 and 20 5 and 50 4 and 40. now if we find the relationship of the last number so we can see that for the first and the last number it's 2 times 2 is 4 5 times 5 is 25 so now we can tell that the third number is the square of the first number. So 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25. So the blank would be 4 squared, which is 16. So the answer is D, 16. So yeah. Now, this last question is, how many green apples are in a crate of 48 red and green apples? If there are double the number of green apples, then red apples. Okay, so for that question, it's a bit of a mouthful. But yeah, what it's basically trying to say is that if there's total 48 apples and there's double the amount of green apples than red apples. So how many green apples are in total? So in this, again, we use algebra. So since there's double the amount of green apples than red apples, we can say red, uh, red apples are X. So red apples is X. And since green is double the amount, green is 2X. So total we have 2x plus x which is 3x and since we have a total of 48 apples 3x is 48 so x is 16 that means there are 16 red apples since red is x so since green is 2x which is double 16 or times 16 by 2 so which is 32 so the answer would be b 32 so yeah, that's just a bunch of questions for the selective school exam. These are just to help you practice and give you an idea of what they'll be like. So yeah, I hope you found this helpful. Yeah, so those were all the questions and I really hope you found that useful. So if you did like those questions, make sure to give a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And again, make sure to check the description box for more information about the classes and stay tuned for more videos.